Greetings, citizens of the Republic. It's Wyvern Fall today. I will be doing a documentary on the grim future of America. First off, to shatter some illusions. USA, which I can back up by sources, and now what do you think? It is America is run by a select few group of donors and wealthy elites. Not we the people, but the, but they the rolling 1%. Now who are these rolling 1% you might ask? They're the lobbyists, the donors, the big business CEOs, and that compose certain aspects of capitalism. Now it's important to understand the difference between capitalism and a republic. Capitalism. An, ep- an economic and political system in which the country's trade and industry are, are controlled by pu- private owners for profit rather than by the state. Republic, a state in which the supreme power rests in the body of the citizens entitled to vote and is exercised by representatives chosen directly or indirectly by them. As you can see, these are totally different things and confusing the two put the republic in grave danger. For example, a democratic republic where only the super rich can vote in elections wouldn't be a democratic, but it would be capitalist most certainly. Now that we're all on the same page, time to move on to the point. Who are these 1% in detail? Who are the lobbyists, the, the CEOs, the donors? You might ask now that we're done with the intro. Part one is the following. Oil Industrial Complex. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson did not intend capitalism to be on the scale that allows massive mega corporations that are Halliburton, Exxon, BP, etc. in their current form. Just look at the antitrust laws. They simply got around them by setting shop outside the USA, lobbying Congress and keeping a global monopoly on rare, extremely limited resources. They run out one day soon. On top of On top of that, increasing limits and an oil will lead to more wars. Just use the Iraq War, the prime example of that. Not, 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 not even to mention the other wars the USA isn't involved in, and and the, they still profit off of now. And if that wasn't bad enough, shout out to the to these wars. I mean, the USA invade countries left and right and nation build them. There's also the fact that these oil companies are making the USA entirely dependent on fossil fuels. On fossil fuels. When those run out, the USA won't have much of, if anything, in the way of electricity or fuel. It's even anticipated that by 2051, Earth will run dry of oil, and by 2061, natural gas, and by 2081, all fossil fuels, including coal. On top of that, studies from NASA show the Earth will warm by 6 degrees if within within the century. This cash crop global warming increase was on fuels rising enough to put Venice and probably Manhattan under water. Cash crop climate change is all in mass extinction, drought, and severe weather on an astronomical scale. And overall societal collapse. On top of that, pollution caused by the oil complexes is so severe that it seriously jeopardizes our ecosystems, even now, but much more severely in the future. Eventually, to a great degree, uh, affect humankind globally. Also, keep in mind that the Industrial Revolution's capitalist aspect happened most in America, so by far, or so by not, not doing anything, we're enabling this action. Oh, sorry, wrong slide. There are two paths to the world to go down. The good one, renewables, and the bad one, oil. Right now we're going down the bad one. Keep in mind there's also some solutions to this, which are 
relatively clean, namely geothermal, wind, solar, hydrothermal, and salt reactors. One of these have no drawbacks. They're all far better than energy being in the grip of the oil industry. This isn't radically, this is not a radically insanity either. On top of that, it's a concept that has been done in Europe and in Australia. It just needs to be done in the USA and other large countries as well. Now, um, in the Council of the Government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence by the sought or unsought by the military industrial complex. Quote by, quote by Dwight D. Eisenhower. Uh, the military industrial complex. Another powerhouse that really pulls strings behind America negatively and brings it down from inside is the military industrial complex. How you might ask, well, first off, it lobbies for wars to nation build countries, which causes the USA to constantly be at war with eight plus countries at, at high and full air war, two plus in land, namely Iraq and Afghanistan, and several more in covert air and field operation missions. These wars damage the US economy, not to mention kill many Americans who choose to serve the United States of America. For all the general population while only benefiting the warmongers who started a lobby such wars and, and as if that wasn't bad enough, some military terrible hardware designed by said military industrial complex. Then after war goes to police departments in the USA to militarize them into a military type force. Further parts of the documentary will elaborate on how this is a bad thing. As such is the consequence for not regulating the military industrial complex properly. Prison industrial complex. Yet another portion of the 1% that controls America. These industries lobby for laws so that put more nonviolent offenders in prison. The PIC perpetually is a flawed belief that imprisonment is an effective solution to societal problems such as homelessness, unemployment, drug addiction, mental illness, and illiteracy. Because of the prison industrial complex, not only did the USA have a larger prison population than both Iran and communist China or any other country on earth for that matter. But they use the prison for cheap labor, such as making uniforms, clothing, furniture, license plates, other items, etc. And they only get paid around seven cents an hour for it. On top of that, some guards have occasionally been known to by press in USA to kill prisoners who are not on the death row. The prison industrial complex also helps fund police training to be more brutal, focusing more on how to shoot than how to enforce law. Surveillance industrial complex. Moreover, America is being run to the ground by lobbyists in favor of sur surveilling the public's metadata, metadata, history, etc. to keep America from safe from terrorism, quote unquote. When in reality, these people, such as Microsoft, Verizon, Spectrum, AT&T, etc., are lobbying for the NSA, FBI, CIA to spy on our emails, searches, posts, videos, texts, calls, and photos, etc. And they also help lobby the Patriot Act, a disaster that will be detailed later on. And guess what they get in exchange? Money, lots and lots of it. Some examples of the nightmares they passed are the Patriot Act, the mass surveillance that allowed it, and that it allowed, etc. When engaged in this kind of activity, they also work very closely with the military industrial complex to get it done. In fact, some surveillance the NSA is now doing involves wiretapping phones, TVs, laptops, etc. So remember, you're all being watched. Media industrial complex. Due to the extremely corrupt nature of American capitalism, American mainstream TV media doesn't cover investigative journalism very much. Due to ratings no now in reality, they simply want a ton of money from donors and lobbyists and are willing to, to give up being proper media and uh, to become an R for the corporate police state's propaganda for money. Mercenary industrial complex. All they prefer to be called PMCs or prime military contractors. Groups such as Blackwater and Tiger Swan are in reality legalized corporate mercenary groups 
Soldiers of crude capitalism ready to be sold to the highest bidder to enforce tyranny or commit war crimes wherever they go. The United States government makes extensive use of black water for overseas war crimes and emergency enforcement. And Tiger Swan for suppressing protesters in America and doing mass surveillance as well. As both for securing government facilities on occasion, either overseas facilities or in prisons or in government watch centers. This proves that the USA is very corrupt. Water industrial complex. Then just when you think it ends at resources and government, it's even worse. Water companies have been constantly using groundwater to charge exorbitant prices for it in bottles while they made illegal target rain rainwater. In the meantime, tap water got contaminated by stagnant reservoirs, faulty pipes, and copper and lead based chemicals in water companies like DuPont continue to charge massive prices for bottled water. Or so just a place like Flint, where in which the is their fault the in which is their water industrial complex is fault that the water rivers are poisoned because of Gen X chemical byproduct dump. Don't die of their broken infrastructure and if the groundwater goes much drier in the next few decades, people will suffer massive droughts in the USA that'll make the nineteen thirties seem like nothing when combined with the problems of big oil and big agriculture. So indeed, the water is in fact being exploited as well as the resources in government. Agricultural industrial complex. Monsanto, Bayer, and others have lobbied to heavily industrialized farming in America. Now why is this relevant, you might ask? We'll look at the Dust Bowl and look at very large farms in the early 1900s to late 30s versus the large farms in the 1980s to, to today. Very similar in that they're massive and getting rid of the topsoil. No to alternatives. The UN published a study saying medium sized farms in aquaculture are much better than large sized farms because they don't damage topsoil to, to the degree large ones do. But at the same time, there are famines like a small farm based economy does. As more topsoil gets damaged and more forests are destroyed by increasingly inefficient agriculture, that they profit from charging for high tech farm equipment and advanced pesticides. Droughts and fires will only get worse and worse, and it will eventually risk famine on a scale rarely ever seen in the developed world. Pharmaceutical industrial complex. Major drug companies like CVS and others have been known to increase the price of American medicines exponentially from the true value. To try to make more money, well, they also do this in the UK and other countries are not as severe, but it's still a thing that leads to the loss of life as many cannot afford the medicine they need. It is a serious danger to human life, which shows the USA is even more bought out. Federal Reserve. Contrary to popular belief, the Federal Reserve isn't owned by the government. It's used by the government in many ways, owned, but the big banks pull the strings on much of it. For example, they set the value so no competition can pop up and they have a monopoly, as well as inflation and in stocks. So they keep themselves rich at the price of the rest of the public, while the dollar devalues more and more over the decades. As the world can see, even the United States Treasury is corrupted by a runaway capitalism gone too far. Patriot Act, perhaps the worst, worst outcome of the military and surveillance industrial complex. This law, this law allows mass surveillance in the public as a cabinet department called the Homeland Security Department that acts in, in many ways unconstitutionally. This act also makes the police only need so much as a hunch to search and detain you if you're falsely suspected of terrorism. Makes the police in some ways outgun the military. Lou, Let's well, leeway for a lot more profiling, etc. It's a very long act, but there is a useful Wikipedia page for information that I encourage you to read. Result being very corrupt government that has extremely undemocratic levels of power. Police then some cases outgun the military. For example, mag magazine round types, head armor, etc. Rife abuse of power by police forces in the federal government, like police shootings, mass surveillance. 
Surveillance on the scale never seen before bar door to Orwell's works. Constant wars and economic disasters result. Poisonous water and as expensive could be medicine. Impending doom and climate change, pollution and droughts. Secret torture facilities run by the CIA overseas. Inflation, etc. Conclusion being, our government is emerging of corporate and government interests for an autocratic regime that works against the interests of its people and which many define as fascism. It will only get worse if they stay silent. Capitalism in the USA is way out of control. And regulation is a good answer, but probably won't happen. Sincerely, Wyvern Full Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And it's not and farewell.